Thank you, President Dye. I received a telephone call sometime back in 2016 from Meta Barber, whom I hadn't seen or talked to in many years, and then I met with her at my office about some urban farming program that she was involved in or starting in New York City on a leftover piece of land along Willis Road in the York Housing Authority Parkway Homes development. And Emetta described with much excitement what this group, York Fresh Food Farms, was planning to do. She compared it to similar urban farming programs in Baltimore and that they were going to responsibly grow and distribute all this fresh produce to persons in York City whom did not have access to fresh locally grown vegetables. And this all sounded great, but you know, we are in York, not New York, not Baltimore. Uh, so I went over to the Parkway Home site one morning, which was just a one acre patch of grass, and I met this guy, Bruce Manns, who introduced himself as, I'm the farmer. <laughs> and without missing a beat, this guy, who seemed to be on his 20th cup of coffee already, <laughs> uh, proceeded to tell me everything that York Fresh Fruit Farms was going to do on this vacant, odd-shaped parcel. He pointed to areas where there would be fencing and underground water irrigation and greenhouses and workshed, rows of this vegetable and that vegetable and parking for a delivery truck and et cetera, et cetera. And, Oh, and he was going to do it all this week, and the planning would all be done next week. So when I stopped by a week or so later, it was all done. A beautifully laid out garden on all the flat and sloped areas, completely planted with full drip irrigation. And later that year, during the harvest of 2016, the plot looked magnificent, producing a spectacular yield of fresh vegetables. York Fresh Food Farms expanded in 2017 with a second nearby site in York City and now expects to harvest over 12 tons of vegetables this year, which is impressive, I think. Today's two speakers will tell you their story in much more detail and where they're headed in the future. They both have very impressive personal resumes. Meta Barber, who's the treasurer of York Fresh Food Farms, was born in Chicago and grew up in Flossmoor, Illinois, and holds multiple degrees from institutions including the University of Michigan, the Thomas M. Cooley Law School, which is now part of Western Michigan University, Temple University, and George Washington University. She was employed at Stock and Leader in York for over 20 years, leaving as a partner and shareholder in 2005 to work in the nonprofit world. Additionally, additionally, Meta has an impressive resume of community activism, political involvement, and smart growth advocacy on a state, local, and national level, and she currently lives in Red Lion. Bruce Manns is the farm manager and president of York Fresh Food Farms. He was born in Pensacola, Florida, and is a retired Verizon executive, having spent 30 plus years in telecommunications with CNP Telephone, and Bell Atlantic Verizon throughout the greater Maryland, Washington, D.C. area. Bruce is a political science business graduate of the University of Maryland and received a Master of Theology degree from St. Mary's Seminary in Baltimore. And he and his family currently reside on a dairy farm, one of my favorite places, Brogue, Pennsylvania. Downtown Brogue, okay. Please welcome Meta and Bruce. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure we need a presentation. I really, really appreciate all you've said, and uh, the invoca invocation was 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 just wonderful. And I've I've never been a Rotary member myself, but I just want to tell you how much I admire Rotary. Um, my daughter, uh, who is uh, grown up now, when she was 16 years old. Um, was a Rotary Exchange student in Japan. She was in Nagoya, Japan for nine months and it was a absolutely life-changing experience for her and uh, helped her make life choices 
uh, up until today. So we have, our whole family has a warm spot for Rotary. Um, I, uh, I met Bruce in uh, 2012, and um, his skill and expertise in growing vegetables <laughs> and his commitment and mission to grow food for people in need, his work growing and donating food from his personal garden to the Northeast Neighborhood Association, and his uh, management of the Broad Street garden, Community Garden in the city of York, um, led us inevitably to discussions of and conversations about creating an urban farm in the city of York. Um, so, what am I doing wrong? Backwards, I'm pointing at the wrong end. Uh -huh. Excuse us a minute, we have a technical issue here. Do we have to be clear? Do we have the technical? Can we have it? You have to point it at the box. It's, yeah, it's to change it, you have to point it up here. And if it doesn't work, yeah. That's good. This is good. This is, this is excellent. We're fine. <laughs> All right. No. Uh, sorry. So various pieces of this project uh, for creating an urban farm came together in 2015 and uh, we incorporated uh, York Fresh Food Farms in October of 2015. We have a five-member board of directors that manages uh, our operations. 2018 will be our third growing season. York Fresh Food Farms was created to provide food for those in need and to increase access to fresh locally grown vegetables. Since the urban farm is in the city of York, our focus is on city residents particularly residents in low-income, underserved, and food desert areas. York Fresh Food Farm's mission is to increase safe, healthy food choices to build a healthier community and, through sustainable organic farming, operate a community demonstration farm as a resource for the city of York. Um, at York Fresh Food Farms, our work helps make York a healthier place. So some of you may be familiar with the um, 2016 Regional Health Plan for York and Adams County. These regional plans are uh, re re researched and uh, issued about every three years. And not surprisingly, uh, health issue number one is the high rate of adult uh, obesity and overweight. The plan's first goal is to reduce obesity, and the first objective is to increase fruit and vegetable consumption. According to York County's 2015 Community Health Needs Assessment, which precedes the development of the plan, only 4% of adults in York County consume the recommended three servings of vegetables daily. And among low-income individuals, that percentage falls to about 1%. So if we're going to make York a healthier place, we need to increase vegetable consumption. We need to increase access to fruits and vegetables and bring vegetables closer to the city neighborhoods. York Fresh Food Farms will launch its mobile produce market, a farm stand on wheels, on June 1st. The mobile market will have stops in seven different city neighborhoods. And until September of last year, all our harvests at York Fresh Food Farms were donated to feeding and nutrition programs, food pantries, and uh, health clinics. Then in September, we uh, held a series of pop-up farmers markets at 12 different locations from mid-September to November 3rd. And this gave us an opportunity to have a trial run of our mobile market and uh, develop a relationship with different market partners. 
figure out what good market stops would be, uh, hear the preferences of our, our customers, and the like. We expect about half our customers to be Hispanic, um, and we are very uh, fortunate to have a market manager who will come back to us this summer, who is, um, uh, his family is from Puerto Rico and he is bilingual. Our, mar our mobile produce market will accept SNAP benefits, which is what used to be called food stamps. And our pricing is a combination of keep it simple, that is things being a dollar or two dollars a pound, and uh, basically selling at or under what Walmart is selling for for non-organic vegetables. And every uh, all the vegetables at York Fresh Food Farms are organically grown. So I've got some. You know, there's a poster for the markets last year, and this is the market in front of. Um, Lee's, a corner store on North Pershing that's about two blocks from where our farm is on at 150 Willis Road. Uh, this is at White Rose Senior Center on Broad Street and this happened to be about all these folks assembled about two minutes after we set up and uh, it's homecoming day at, and they had music. It was really terrific. And this is uh, our, our um, uh, set up at uh, the Rabbit Downtown Transit Center for Rabbit Transit. So we are trying to change the way York thinks about vegetables. And now here's Bruce. Where's the coffee at, Frank? <laughs> I, I was military. I was born in Pensacola. My father was a, a Marine, surprisingly. A fighter pilot during World War II, and they called them all back. And I came along during the Korean War, and, uh, and that's another story in itself. So we are trying to change the way that York thinks about vegetables. I had shared with Frank in a, in a conversation earlier. Um, part of my early life was in Baltimore City, um, and I remember up to the time as I was 12 years of age, uh, on Saturday morning at my grandmother's, the street Arabs would come through. Uh, with a pony and cart. Think of what we're trying to do is reach the people with a modern day pony and cart. That's the method. Uh, we, we're reaching out to people. They're not coming into Central Market. Uh, they're not coming into Penn Market because well, Penn Market is not existing as we know it right now at the moment. But uh, but reaching out to where people are located at. So. so 150 Willis Road is located in the Parkway Homes. Uh, development. This is like a 1.2 acre piece, slightly sloped. Uh, this is what it looked like before we started. I think Frankie saw it like that. It was actually at one point in time five tractor trailers that were used for storage by Habitat for Humanity. Um, rather rough. <laughs> Nothing growing on it and uh, pretty much for the last 40 plus years it was undeveloped. It was part of a farm originally or a parkway homes. Uh, was located in the late 50s. In fact, we have some Google Earth pictures of what it looked like. Even on the edge of it at Willis Road, they used to have a tobacco drying farm, which is kind of neat. So uh, some of my neighbors are Amish, and yes, they still dry tobacco. So. so you have to start building a farm. You have to take a look at the soil. You have to figure out what you can or can't grow in it, whether there's any issues. One of the things I may mention, we are organic, uh, Rodale certifications and permaculture stuff certs and stuff that I have, uh, but and we test the soil, we test it for things like heavy metals and stuff. This is very, very healthy soil, surprisingly, uh, and we are in, in process. I think this week later, Matt and I are going to have the soil tested again, uh, just to be safe, and, uh, and with that, I know what I need to do. For example, I do grow a marine, uh, green manure crops. I'm always feeding the soil. The, the message is feed the soil, feed the soil, and when you're done, feed the soil, it will feed you. So you're, we're called to be stewards of a lot of things, and I think the soil is one of them as well. So, uh, so we've received some grants, and we had to start out with bringing water to the location. This does not have, uh, this is public water. This isn't a well. Uh, you wouldn't have the ability to put it in there, and I would be, I would imagine that what you would draw out would probably be not healthy anyway. So, uh, we had to get the water trenched uh, at a location up on Pershing and across our fence and down and in, and. Uh, Typically what you do with drip irrigation, you're doing your hydrant faucets. If you've been to a farm before, the frost-free hydrant faucets is what we use. 
Uh, our other location last year, we uh, with work with True North Wellness Services, uh, we were granted access and, and support uh, to develop the the open work. For those of you who've taken your driver's test at the old state police headquarters, this is the field behind it. We used to do the three-point turns and stuff. That ball field behind it is where we have set up to be a farm. It's in the fireside community, and it bordered by the backyards of a lot of houses and off of Fairlane Drive. Uh, we did the same thing, put in the water. We've been supported and has the names of the various organizations that have helped us out with your water, for this example. Uh, the interesting thing here, as a farmer's perspective, you, play, you put your water line in three feet deep. We ran into no rock. It's a shock. I was absolutely shocked at this thing and excavated. It wasn't, wasn't a problem one, suddenly one day. One day excavation, and the plumber came in and hooked up, tamped it down, and off we go. So starting at anything, this is a commercial endeavor in the sense that we're using uh, commercial processes to intensively farm and grow as much food as possible for distribution. Uh, to that end, we do drip irrigation, we do what they call fertigation, the organic um, substrates that we put in uh, to feed the plants, and uh, you lay in black plastic, drip line, and uh, off we go. It's a lot of work, uh, but the results are quite amazing what you get. So here's some examples of it. There's some lines of cabbages. Um, basically, we're growing three months, of, uh, three seasons of the year. Uh, we have an early spring, which I'm growing right now in the greenhouse for planting, uh, which could go in. If you can tell me what the weather is, I'd like to know too. Uh, probably the first week of April, I'll be uh, planting something in the ground, I hope, in, outside, and we'll see. So we, we have stuff like your cabbages, cauliflower, broccoli, lettuces, uh, some onions, and so on that will be going in the ground soon. I'll leave it at that. Various kinds of crops were grown. We're also adding, it's one of the things that Med had mentioned, um, I'm also adding some things that the folks, uh, uh, the, the Hispanic uh, uh, population uh, from Puerto Rico, we have a number of peppers, aicito, uh, I'm doing things like called, called uh, racal, which is a culantro. I have a number of seeds I'm able to source out of Puerto Rico that I can grow in the zone. Uh, and, I, and in fact, are being, being grown as we, as we speak. I partner with uh, Miller Plant Farm, Dave. I work with Dustin. I was their retail rep for their greenhouse for talking up vegetables, because I love talking about vegetables. <laughs> There's a story behind that, because I grew up on concrete with no vegetables. <laughs> so that's one of those God things in life. And um, kind of a mixture of everything that we grow. And again, some of it's seasonal. We will be basically starting the harvest, as Matt has said, the commercial side of this thing. It starts in June and will go all the way through Thanksgiving. And uh, we support, like again, the, uh, the Life Pass, the uh, Catalasa, the Family First, et cetera, et cetera. We we'll support for that as well. And as an example of who we donate to, I have a special thing in my heart for a northeast neighborhood. I've been growing out of my own personal gardens a quarter of an acre of mine, where we live at. And um, I've worked a lot with Crystal Sexton McGeech and True Saint, she passed on. She's graduated last year. And uh, I, I love the neighborhood. It's, it's rough down there, but it's a wonderful neighborhood of people out there. And uh, one of the things we had, we had a 53-foot trailer that uh, we bought from the habitat, we lowered it, and we've modified it. The important thing is we have a cold room, and that's important because we can harvest and we can distribute based according to time and need. Uh, we have that in, inside this trailer, uh, insulated, uh, refrigerated, and it allows us to harvest stuff as it's due. One of the things happens in farming nature, especially vegetables, when it's ready, you can't put it off another day or two. Things, if you've been around long enough, it'll, it'll bolt. Your lettuces will bolt or your radishes will bolt in, in a day or two. So when it has to come out, it's got to come out. Also, for building the infrastructure, I'm an infrastructure guy. Um, you know, a biblical example of it is the master builder. I'm building the first course for the next generation. My hope and my goal is to pass this on to somebody 
uh, another farm manager type, and I, you know, that hasn't been revealed to me or us yet uh, from York City to take this to the next level, building the first course. The greenhouses we're using right now, one of them which is heated, uh, I'm growing the transplants for planting in the ground, it'll be for the seedlings. Um, you have the pictures of things, seedlings coming up. Uh, we have that located. Uh, the one that I think we mentioned to Frank, that's the high tunnel. If you go by Willis, uh, Willis Lane Road, that's 25 by 100 foot, it's 15 foot high at the peak. That will allow me to extend my season to three full seasons. This particular year, I've decided based on the market and the surveys and talking to our constituents, uh, it's going to be peppers. So it's going to be maybe between 550 and 700 pepper plants in that. That's a lot of peppers. <laughs> um, the interesting thing is you have to know things. Uh, the folks, uh, the primary population, Hispanic population is Puerto Rican. It's not hot peppers. No, it's not, it's not going to be. I'll, have, I'll be growing some anchos and uh, jalapenos. I'm just not, not much in ghost, not much in habanero. So it'll be a lot of sweet peppers. And some also unique uh, cultural ones as well. I even got a Peruvian I'm going to try this year. In order to do anything, you need equipment. One of the important things, we received the grant, and that's my, my baby. I'm a happy guy. I'm on a, <laughs> I'm on a, tra I'm, I'm on a farm now. And of course, that's a small tractor compared to these integrated things we have in John Deere on the dairy farm. But this is the right size for us doing our work there, for the laying of the uh, plastic mulch, for the uh, rototilling that is necessary to turn over the soil and prep it. And that's actually a door getting up right now. And, this Saturday, I will be on that in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Community events, we have our grand openings at our various locations, and we welcome the community. In fact, we, what we did, uh, we grew tomato plants, pepper plants, cucumber plants, that had three and five gallon buckets we filled with soil for people who don't have, you don't have any um, a backyard that you can grow on a balcony. So you have a tomato plant in a, in a bucket. And we've done now, we gave about 150 plants away, and we're planning on doing it. Our, our grand opening for Walsh Road is going to be May the 15th. That will be announced. Uh, you're welcome to come. I invite you to come and see the, see the neighborhood and see what we're doing. Uh, I'm available for tours. And uh, we have bring coffee. <laughs> this summer, we have funded a Get Your Hands Dirty program is basically for the summertime for the neighborhood kids for various associations that will be here on site. Uh, we have some raised beds. We will uh, be providing some uh, educational programming around the agricultural world. Um, the thing about it is, and this is, this is my thing, it, it, we've disconnected from the land, and uh, this is a way of reconnecting it. Um, I plan, and I haven't talked to folks in the city. I'm on a dairy farm. I plan to bring some calves and piglets down too. Uh, I want to connect it to this is where your food comes from. <laughs> you know, bottle feed the calf or something like that. It's a lot of fun. But uh, we need to reconnect it. We've been so distanced from the thing. It doesn't come in a can, folks. It really doesn't. So and we're also looking for volunteers. We had several volunteers. We we have a volunteer group of uh, the Rotarians and Red Line. Steve Snell is coming in. April the 21st with his group, and we're planting at two locations. I'm planting some strawberries at the Willis Road location. I'm planting 175 asparagus grounds at Roosevelt Avenue. And also in addition to that, a lot of the seniors are asking when they see my, my uh, rainbow chart, they're thinking that it's rhubarb. Well, I'm planting rhubarb. <laughs> for, uh, that's a first for me because I didn't grow up with it, though I did eat strawberry. In rhubarb pie, but I never grew it. <laughs> and that's the challenge. The challenge is reclaiming land. There's a lot of green spaces. Uh, when Meta had met me, I'd already visited places in Baltimore, D.C., and in Philadelphia, and it, it was it was an eye opener. And I had to say, why about why not York? York has the ability to do the thing, so we had to address the zoning issues, the permitting issues, and so on. But the thing about it is, you're bringing life into the community. A different facet of it uh, that's you know years ago I've got some the old YouTube clips of, of the uh, Victory Garden from World War II with Jimmy Durante Gary Moore I've shown them in some nursing homes and stuff like that and um, bring that kind of thing back mm -hmm. okay. Two minutes. Two minutes. any questions mm -hmm. sir
Bruce, would fruit trees be conducive to what you're trying to do? Yes, certain ones would be. The, uh, we are going to put some in, some of the self-pollinating varieties. That's in, in, in not the medium near future. Uh, some of the issues is, are some of the apples and stuff because of the acid rain have scab issues. Uh, so you have to pick the right varieties. The answer is yes, we'll have some. And, and that will be, that, that, that's one of our plans. We, in fact, one of the things that's not mentioned there, we have two hives from the York County Beekeepers Association. They're maintained down there. Uh, both of them survived this winter, which is a great thing. And this year we'll be taking honey off of them. I'm very, I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like and how it tastes. And there are varieties of honey. They're not just like, I mean, that's orange blossom clover. It, what it looks like is like looking at wine. It's got a, it's got a unique a, a taste and a view of it, whether it's dark or light. I'll find out. I'll find out. News at 11. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Yes. Do you have ownership of the ground that you're cultivating? No, actually, we're leasing it. We're leasing it from the uh, York Housing Authority at Willis and from True North Wellness Services. In fact, we've been in the process of extending the one at York Housing Authority for an additional five years, and we'll be approaching probably this year. You know, might as well look at me. We'll be approaching, approaching Gary Trout and True North Wellness Services. The thing about it is, it's uh, the chances are those, but one particular location won't be re redeveloped because of it's you'd have to put a lot of dirt in to get it level, literally. Uh, but um, we're going to be having a market on Saturdays right there at the Parkway Homes as well. We've planted our stakes in the community. Uh, we're there. We've been in it. I've been doing urban agriculture now in nine years. Um, York is a wonderful place to get to know the people, and you know that's my sharing salt. That's how I share salt. I'm, I'm extending trust through food. Thank you. In honor of today's program, Maida and Bruce were invited to autograph our book plate that will be placed inside Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee. And we would love to have Robin Albright please come up and accept this book because we are donating it to the York County School of Technology Library. Okay, thank you.